Last time I showed you a technique I use to test my knowledge of the indicators that I use. But I also told you about how I use this as an educational tool to train myself to understand indicators better. And it's not until I've been through this process enough times to fully understand an indicator that I consider building it into a trading strategy. What I'm going to show you today is really a case study of how I go through this training process using one example indicator. And I'll stick with the stochastic oscillator for continuity with the last episode. So in the last episode, you saw me putting myself to the test and predicting what a price chart would look like just by looking at the stochastic indicator and nothing else. So for those that didn't see that episode, I'm going to very quickly put myself to the test again using some different data that I've never seen before and then go into the detail of the educational side of this process. So as I showed you last time, I like to use a script that automatically takes me to a random part of the chart. And so just by clicking that, it will take me to price data that I've not seen before. If you want to download a copy of this script, then you can do that from the description below. But what I now want to do is hide this price data completely. And I'm going to attempt now to draw the price action just by looking at the stochastic indicator. So because I've already seen the price action for this one, I'm just going to generate a new section of this data. So initially, due to the fact that we can see the stochastic going up and down within the two bounds means that it hasn't got very much momentum in either direction. So these are probably going to be fairly small moves like we see here. And then it looks as though we might have a breakout to the downside here with a pullback, but then a continuation of the downtrend very strongly at this point. Now, what we can tell from this is because the momentum stays in this oversold region for quite a while, it means that we're maintaining this fairly significant downtrend here. Then we have a fairly major pullback from that, but I think this is only a pullback because the stochastic doesn't go into the overbought regions and so we're probably seeing this sort of thing like this but then the downtrend continues and I would probably estimate because again of the strength here that this continues lower than the previous low that we had here. Just bring this down a bit like this. Then we enter more choppy price behavior where the price seems to be going up and down like this. This is a stronger one here. So this is probably going lower than the previous one. And then we probably are going to make a few new short term highs above these levels before the momentum eventually dies out again and the price comes down. So this is my estimate of what the price action looks like based on this stochastic activity. So let's now take a look and see how close I got. Okay, so we've got the low volatility choppy behavior at the top here, as I said before we come down into this fairly significant downtrend and then the price be the trend rather begins to weaken as we see this choppy behavior here which you can see here and then i predicted that the price would make new lows which then indeed they do before sorry before entering this behavior here and the new high being created over here. So overall, not a bad estimate of what happened to the price. 
So what I'm going to do now is to talk you through the process that I take myself when I'm actually training myself to interpret indicators in this way to predict what the price charts might look like. And the easiest way of doing this is by chunking up the price action into sections that have common behavior. So for example here, this period of the price chart is a very strong uptrend. And so now it's a case of looking at how that indicator behaves in one of these uptrends. So the overriding characteristic here is that you can see that the stochastic indicator spends an awful lot of time in the overbought region. And what you'll also notice is that if there are short term reductions in the stochastic value out of the overbought region, but then when it returns, this is usually indicative of a pullback. And we can see that here, 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 and here as we see this price come down. So this does not mean that the price has necessarily turned in the opposite direction. And assessing indicators in this way is so important because if you're going to use them to help you predict when to enter a trade and exit a trade, you need to have this level of understanding. Now what then happens is that the price enters this region here which becomes very choppy and you can see that a trading range has developed. So looking back at the indicator now we can see that there are no sustained periods of time when the indicator is either in the overbought region or the oversold region and so this means we're not trending. And the relatively rapid up and down movement of the indicator means that we are in this trading range, as you can see here. But then what happens is the indicator starts to spend a lot more time again in this overbought region. And again, only with fairly minor reductions in the value of the stochastic. And so again, these are indicative here of pullbacks as opposed to full reversals. And as we can see, we have this period of a nice clean uptrend. So now moving to this area at the beginning of the chart, what we see here is that activity is fluctuating on the stochastic, but it's not entering the overbought and oversold regions at all. So what this tells us is that we're in a trading range but more than that, it indicates we're in a low volatility trading range. So there isn't very much movement. And as you can see here, there's a lot of what is effectively noise up and down in this period of time, but the price isn't going anywhere. And so again, the stochastic indicator is very good at informing us that this is what is happening in the market. And so studying the price data alongside the indicator data in this way is the part of the process that I call the education. And from this, you can obviously get a much deeper understanding of the patterns that are produced by the indicator that are indicative of different patterns in the underlying price action. And therefore you're deepening your understanding. So what I recommend that you then do is you test yourself again on some new price data that you've never seen before. Use the script that I've provided to take you to a random location if that helps you. And then go through this whole cycle again and again and again. So after you've tested yourself, go back, look then at the price data to see how well you did. But wherever you got it wrong, educate yourself in terms of how that indicator is actually behaving. And when you've been around this cycle enough times, you're then in a position to be able to design your strategy's rules based on this indicator. Now, from my own experience, I don't think enough traders go through this process, or they certainly don't spend enough time doing it. 
they instead choose to Google for ideas on how to use an indicator, or they'll read someone's blog and their opinion of how they should be using maybe divergences of that or certain patterns in the indicator to be able to put it to use. But if you rely on what someone else thinks and what someone else says, you'll never understand it properly yourself. So my advice is to spend quality time going through an exercise like the one you've seen today. If you use MT5, make sure you use the script to take you to a random position on the chart. There's a link to where you can find this in the description right below and just see how you get on. But I can guarantee that by the end of the process, you'll have got significantly better at being able to predict the price chart successfully. And that means you're understanding your indicator better, which of course is the whole objective of the process. Now look out for the next episode, because in this, I'm going to turn my attention to looking at some of the specific techniques you can use to put indicators to optimal use and start making predictions of what will happen in the price action next. After all, that's why we're using indicators. Our ultimate objective is to make a probability-based prediction of where the price is going to go in the future. And so if we're not using indicators effectively and don't understand what they're telling us, then how can we expect to be able to do this? So be sure to subscribe right here and set an alert so that you get notified when that episode gets released. Also, if you're new to DarwinX and you want to find out about the trading platform that we provide and the advantages that that gives to traders just like you, then click the link here to read more. So good luck when you put yourself to the test with today's task. And until next time, trade safe.